When it comes to the poetry unit, I get the strongest reactions from students than compared to any other unit that I do. Analyzing poetry is just figuring out what's going on in the poem, what the author, what the poet wanted us to get out of it. And some of them are easier than others, absolutely. There have been some poets that I've read that I still have difficulty figuring out. But it's like a puzzle. I like trying to make sense of it. In this video, what I'm going to be showing you are ways that you can try and break down a poem in order to understand it. The poem we're going to be working with is called You Are Not Responsible by Harriet Mullen. We are not responsible for your lost or stolen relatives. We cannot guarantee your safety if you disobey our instructions. We do not endorse the causes or claims of people begging for handouts. We reserve the right to refuse service to anyone. Your ticket does not guarantee that we will honor your reservations. In order to facilitate our procedures, please limit your carrying on. Before taking off, please extinguish all smoldering resentments. If you cannot understand English, you will be moved out of the way. In the event of a loss, you'd better look out for yourself. Your insurance was cancelled because we can no longer handle your frightful claims. Our handlers lost your luggage and we are unable to find the key to your legal case. You were detained for interrogation because you fit the profile. You are not presumed to be innocent if the police have reason to suspect you are carrying a concealed wallet. It's not our fault you were born wearing a gang colour. It is not our obligation to inform you of your rights. Step aside, please, while our officer inspects your bad attitude. You have no rights we are bound to respect. Please remain calm, or we can't be held responsible for what happens to you. In annotating poetry, you're looking for connections, you're looking for questions, you're looking for literary devices. You're identifying what you find confusing or interesting or significant. The goal is figuring out the poem in order to determine what the message, what the theme of the poem is. What does the author want us to get out of it? The image here is an example of a annotation that I did with a previous creative writing class, but I'll demonstrate the overall process for you as well. When you're annotating, you're looking for what stands out to you. So one of the first things that stands out to me is this here, the lost and stolen relatives. There's a few different things there and you'll notice that I'm looking here, I'm noticing a lot of images. These are some of the things that, that are standing out. The first line talks about lost or stolen relatives. Then as I read through, I start looking for, okay, so that makes me think first peoples. What else makes me think first peoples? This last line, it is not our obligation to inform you of our rights. It makes me think of colonization. And I see that similarly, actually, with this one too. You have no rights we are bound to respect. There's this, this idea that when the Europeans came to the Americas, they didn't see First Peoples as being civilized and so they didn't think they needed to respect them. They didn't think that they were equal to Europeans in terms of their worth and I think, I mean, that's a lot of what caused some of the negative things that we've had um, since then. So moving in here we've got the references to First Nations. One of the other major things that I've noticed was the plane thing. It sounds like they're talking about a plane ride. The safety instructions. We reserve the re right to refuse service to anyone. Your ticket and your reservation. The extinguishing, please extinguish. Insurance and claims and handlers and lost luggage. Even the interrogation part like it could be at the airport. And the same thing with the step aside, please, while our officer inspects your bad attitude. And I think this last line, please remain calm or we can't be held responsible for what happens to you. I think that's really significant. The we can't be held responsible is part of the title. 
there's a lot of negativity in here. There's a lot of talk about, you know, we are not, we cannot, we do not, refuse. I'm noticing a lot of that. So I'm just going through and circling all the sort of negative words in here. This, it's not our fault, it's not our obligation. They really tie into this, we are not responsible. As you're annotating a poem, you also want to look for words that you maybe don't understand or that you can't define. So I'm going to go through and look at endorse. That's a word I think I'm going to have to look up to figure out what it means. Facilitate, maybe detained. So I'm going to go and look those up and write down the definitions down the side. Once I've gone through and I've defined the terms and I understand them, I want to look at what questions do I have? What confuses me? What do I wonder about the poem? So when I'm reading through this, one of the things that I wonder, like it says here, you will be moved out of the way. And I wonder out of the way of what? Just like could be moved out of the country maybe? Like you're forbidden from having access? But when I'm looking at the way, it actually makes me think out of the way of progress. So there's this implication that the people to whom the narrator is speaking are impeding progress or getting in the way of it. And that actually brings me back to this idea of who's speaking. The poem is we are not responsible and the author uses we and you. So there's this opposition that's being created, first person plural, so we versus you. And when we look at what's going on in the poem, the you seems to be, like we talk about First Nations, we talk about profiling. Usually when we're talking about profiling, we're thinking of people of color, frequently African American. Another one that's common right now after 9-11, governments and police forces often profile Muslim Americans uh, and Mexican in the states right now as well are being profiled. And when we talk about profile, it is basically stereotypes. So the we then, if the you is people of color, First Nations, Black, Muslim, Arab specifically. Then who's the, the we that's speaking in this? And my guess would be just based on some of the things like here when they're talking about the legal case or being detained for interrogation, the police, our officer. All of those things suggest that the we that's speaking in this is the government, like the, the structures that we have in place. Government, police force, maybe border patrol. But it's this overall society that is the we that are not responsible, the we that cannot guarantee we reserve the right, That's that we is the structures by which we live. Going back to looking at the poem as a whole, I noticed that almost every line is a single sentence. It's grouped in these sentences that the stanzas have coherency as well. So for example, when we're looking at the, the lost and stolen relatives and the people begging for handouts, the idea of service. When I think of service, particularly when looking at seeing this we, the narrator of the poem with the sense of, of power in society, the groups or people who have power. When I think of service, in terms of the government, I think of like your basic services, the things that we are all supposed to get. And I mean, it differs from country to country, but basic services are sort of the things that we are guaranteed by right of being citizens or, or residents in a country. So things like health care, uh, safety, housing, all of these things that 
when you live in a country, you are kind of supposed to get. So going back to the sentences and the stanzas and how they're organized, you've got like this section, this stanza seems to be dealing with specifically the way that police treat people of color. The assumption that far, far too many police officers and governments make that the color of your skin indicates whether you are more or less likely to cause harm or damage. Particularly if you go in here look, looking at the gang color, for example, red or black or yellow, the idea that the color of your skin says something about, well in this case, like whether you're going to be in a gang or not. But then if you look at this section here, it seems a little more connected to the refugee crisis. You've got the idea of loss, got the you cannot understand English, the claims, the legal case, all of those have similarities to the refugee crisis. And then in this beginning one, it seemed to have a little bit more to do with First Nations. And this line as well, where it's talking about the reservations. So although there are examples from all of the different stanzas that could fit into these three areas, there are these groupings that seem more connected to one group than to another. As I go through this, again, I'm coming up with questions and connections and things like this. The key to your case, there is like the literal meaning here, which is a case can be like a suitcase. So the literal key to your suitcase. But then that reference to your legal case instead of a suitcase, there's this sort of subtext meaning of the cases that are in the sense of lawsuits or land claims, for example, with First Peoples or claims of police brutality, things like that. So the key to your legal case is the evidence that will help them get justice. And that idea of legal case actually makes me think of here, where it's inform you of your rights. Well, what do you mean by rights? Is this meant to be a reference to human rights? And in a legal case, or when you're being arrested, you have to inform someone of their rights. So it's not our obligation to inform you of your rights is actually completely incorrect. It's either misleading or it's lying. You see that sort of same idea here. You have no rights we are bound to respect, except that there are international laws about human rights, about the rights that people have. One of the things that stands out to me the most is this last piece. Please remain calm or we can't be held responsible for what happens to you. This please remain calm seems to be saying don't fight back you should just accept what happens because that's the way things are. So if you don't fight back, things will be fine. But if you do, if you fight for your rights, if you fight for what is important, the we, the government, the society, seems to be saying, okay, well, then it's not our fault. Whatever happens to you, it's not our fault. Colonization, not our fault. There's a suggestion that colonization police brutality that blaming the victim you know it's not it's not our fault because you didn't remain calm because you fought back all of a sudden nothing that happens after that society has no responsibility for it when you're looking for theme statements looking at the end of the poem will often help you understand or figure out what the theme is when we look at the poem as a whole, if we look at it on a literal or declarative, like a surface layer, it seems like the poet is saying that society isn't responsible for the bad things that happen to people of color. But when you read through this, when we're looking at what they're saying and the way that they're phrasing it, and the sense of it being like on the surface, 
that analogy of a plane ride, it seems pretty clear that the author is being ironic with this, is seeing things that aren't meant to be taken seriously. So there's this really strong sense of irony, like, in order to facilitate our procedures, please limit your carrying on so that we can get on with things the way we want to stop freaking out, extinguish all smoldering resentments, all of this. There's a sense of, of irony, that sarcasm, in a sense, of the things that the we, the narrator of the poem, are saying are wrong, are not justified or not fair. So that plays into the poem as well. And now that we've gone through the poem and we've asked and, and suggested answers to our questions, we've defined terms, we've made connections, we've summarized what's going on in the poem, now we can write the theme statement. And you can write it in two sentences where you're looking at topic and then the message about that topic. But you don't have to. You can actually write the theme statement in a single sentence. You still have to name the title and author of the poem in your theme statement. Here we're looking at how Mullen is saying that the disclaiming of responsibility, the way the, that society and government says, well, it's not our fault, you need to do something different, is not correct, that the government and society need to take responsibility for this. So we can phrase that like this. The theme of the poem, We Are Not Responsible, by Harriet Mullen, is that the government and society must take responsibility for the way the system treats people of color. 